planet Earth, a world with a history of constant change. Nowhere has the change been more dynamic than in the industry of the modern age, telecommunications. This was the herald of the new age, the electric telegraph. One of the first to see the long-term implications of this new invention was John Pender. In 1866, he was responsible for the laying of the first operational transatlantic cable. It was only fitting that one of the most audacious creations of the Victorian era, the Great Eastern, should help lay the cable that was to inaugurate the new age. For the transatlantic telegraph meant that London and New York were no longer weeks apart, but seconds. Stock exchange and Wall Street prices could be transmitted daily. And suddenly it became rather more urgent to know what was happening the other side of the Atlantic. Demand for the new service spread so rapidly that by the end of the century, Pender presided over an empire of submarine cables spanning the globe. The company he founded was to become Cable and Wireless. But even with the advent of wireless radio telegraphy and telephony in the 1920s, intercontinental communication was still limited until the first coaxial cables snaked their way across the Atlantic, each with a cable capacity of just 36 circuits. Now you could actually talk to someone in New York or Los Angeles, and the global telecommunications industry had come of age. Within 20 years, increased demand led to advances in technology which provided coaxial cables carrying not 36, but more than 1,800 circuits. Around this time, another new technology, the first communication satellites, created new demand by making possible a world of instantaneous sound and vision communication. The 1964 Olympics in Tokyo was the first organized live TV event to reach all parts of the world. Cable and Wireless has now become the largest operator of Earth stations within the international satellite system. Now a new technology has arrived. Fiber optics, which offers a quantum leap in telecommunication abilities. And Cable and Wireless is already leading the way in providing the new kind of telecommunications which this new technology makes possible. For the language of telecommunications is changing. From the analog radio and TV waveform to the digital burst, pulsed at the speed of light down fiber optic cables of near miraculous capabilities. Now it's possible to transmit in a few seconds huge quantities of information which would have taken a trained telegraph operator years to tap out in John Pender's day. The demand for the new capability is already there. From word processors, packet switched data services, facsimile transmission, and all the other communications now handled by computer. To meet that demand, the world will need a new intercontinental signal path. The Global Digital Highway. And Cable and Wireless is building that highway, starting in Britain. Mercury, the only alternative UK carrier, represents the shape of things to come. A new digital communications system for Britain. Mercury means clearer, cheaper, high-quality phone calls, communications, fast communications. data traffic, image transmission, telex, packet switch data, radio paging, and more. Mercury is linking all Britain's main business centers by means of fiber optic cables and microwave radio to form a totally digital network. The whole network operates in digital synchronous mode. It is computer controlled and monitored from the center of the network, our control room at Birmingham. Duplicate transmission paths, equipment and power supplies make the system virtually fail-safe. And the network is expanding all the time. By the end of 1986, transmission links will extend to Scotland and South Wales and to the South Coast. Mercury's first trunk exchanges are now in operation, providing national and international direct dialed services. No crossed lines, clearer conversations, fewer faults, and itemized phone bills priced not to the nearest three minutes, but to the nearest tenth of a second, with details of all calls made. These are some of the reasons why so many business organizations are using Mercury. Mercury's clients in London include the big clearing banks, 
international financial service houses and leading brokers, indeed the London Stock Exchange itself. The deregulation of the City of London's financial markets, the Big Bang, has stimulated an increasing demand for a wider range of more sophisticated communication services. Mercury is well advanced in laying a fiber optic network and installing a System X digital exchange in the City of London to meet this demand. The technological benefits of Mercury are matched by the customer benefits. Less cost, faster fault finding, customer assistance staff on call 24 hours a day, and help for users wanting to set up their own dedicated company network. This is the way communications must go in the future. Not just in Britain, but around the world. Mercury owns and operates five Earth stations, where satellite tracking dishes link the world. The London Dockland site connects by the Atlantic Ocean satellite to North America providing high-speed and metered leased line services. Dialed voice services to North America are also provided via this satellite from Mercury's Oxfordshire site. Another dish tracks the Indian Ocean satellite to provide Hong Kong and fire services. In addition, services to the Caribbean and the Middle East are also provided from the Oxfordshire complex. Mercury is now a fully established international carrier having reached agreement with many telecommunications organizations around the world to provide international dial, telephone and other services. But that's not all. In addition to existing satellite and coaxial cable links, Cable and Wireless has announced PTAT-1. This privately owned and financed fiber optic cable across the Atlantic will be in place by mid-1989, the first stage of the Cable and Wireless global digital highway. As well as telephone calls, its many thousands of circuits will carry all the data transmission, facsimile and video services that the United Kingdom and the United States customers generate. But PTAT-1 will not be alone. By 1992, it will have a system, PTAT-2. When both are operational, they'll create substantial additional capacity between the United Kingdom and the United States to meet and stimulate demand. Cable and Wireless's existing U.S. digital paths will be integrated with additional circuit capacity to provide a framework for a new pathway running from coast to coast. And that will form the second stage of the digital global highway. The third stage takes us across the Pacific, from the west coast of America to Japan. Our aims are that by 1990, our new joint venture with Pacific Telecom of the United States and the new Japanese company in which we plan to participate will operate a trans-Pacific fiber optic cable. Only Cable and Wireless has the know-how and capability to undertake the simultaneous forging of great new cable links across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The Cable and Wireless fleet of cable ships and submersibles is the largest fleet of its kind has laid over one-third of the world's submarine cables during the past decade. The fleet's also one of the most modern. Its flagship, CS Pacific Guardian, is the most sophisticated and cost-effective cable vessel yet built. Her sister, Cable Venture, has the largest cable-carrying capacity of any ship of her type in the world. Cable and Wireless also leads the way in the underwater exploration technology needed to forge new submarine cable trails across the ocean bed and to keep them open. With the new Trans-Pacific Cable, the digital global highway will be a direct path into the fastest growing economic region in the world, the Pacific Basin. On April the 2nd, 1986, Cable and Wireless became the first British company to be listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange and we have responded positively to the invitation to form a partnership with CETO to plan for an alternative international telecommunications company. Support will be given by NTTI, the international subsidiary of the Nippon Telephone and Telegraph Company, which is the dominant operator of telecommunications in Japan. We also plan to extend the digital highway from Japan to Hong Kong and Korea by 1990. Cable and Wireless has long been a major force in the Far East. The Hong Kong internal and external telecommunications systems are operated by Cable and Wireless and are being constantly improved to meet growing demand. 
Hong Kong is also the gateway to the emergent economic superpower, China, where we recently helped complete a 1,000 kilometer microwave system in the Guangdong province, linking 25 cities together and with Hong Kong. The project to enable direct dialing to Hong Kong from 10 cities in the Pearl Delta is now substantially complete. And fiber optic cable now links Shenzhen City, Shahi and Nantou. It is all part of Cable and Wireless's commitment to helping the People's Republic of China improve its communications. And yet, all this is only the beginning. Just as John Pender's transatlantic cable was only a beginning. At every stage over the intervening 120 years, the new communications links have stimulated their own demand. At each stage, that demand created the need for new technology and new capacity. And each time, Cable and Wireless has met the challenge by bringing the world closer together. The digital highway will take that process through into the 21st century. Cable and Wireless, a world leader in telecommunications.